Trying to make sure they didn't be looking. Okay. There we go. All right. I want to say ETM Hotel, do our do our ooh, do our aku, do our nature, Fatmu Alafie, Fatmu Iwa Pele, Majuba Iba E, Igungun, Majuba Iba E, Ilakba. Um, I always have to give honor and praises to uh, the ancestors because, again, without the ancestors, we wouldn't be here. I want to say black African power family. Uh, appreciate y'all for tuning back in to the Master Warrior Clan YouTube uh, YouTube channel. Um, we really, really uh, appreciate uh, you all for tuning in. I know it's going to be some lace tracklers uh, getting in. <clears throat> um, we got uh, Brother Eni Haret, Sean Calfani on, on, uh, on the panel. We got Brother uh, T'Challa Bangara on the panel. Um, before we get started, uh, any of you fellas got anything or anything y'all want to say to the family before we start? Yeah, I was just going to say peace to the family, peace to the to the chat, all those that'll be tuning in. Um, just here to learn something, have a good discussion with the brothers. Been a while, but uh, you know, we still here. I'm doing my thing and uh, just curious to see what the brothers have to bring forward. ETM Hotel, Randy Sean. Welcome in peace. My name is Sean. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to today's show. Um, Stay tuned. We have a lot of information for those who will be straggling in. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate you straggling in, but uh, we won't get it in. We're going to see if we African or not. All right. Well, let me share my screen. Uh, I'm going to get through. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah. Dang. Hold on. We I share my share. Uh, hold on one second. Let me come out. Well, I know what's going to happen once I start. Let me uh come out just a second. Second, second, stop. You lock it on me. All right, now nah, let me go back. All right. And my screen sharing on the other side, y'all. Never mind. I see. I see it. Yeah, All we'll right. See. Well, it, yeah, okay. Uh, with today's presentation is called What is African Coach? So, this presentation that me and uh, my Kofi Pisan brother, any her rest, Sean California. We're going to be uh, presenting uh, together today. I got some slides I'm going to present. He has some slides to present. Um, and basically, you know, what is African culture? You know, a lot of people want to know what is African culture. You should know what African culture is. Now, those that follow the Master Warrior Clan uh, YouTube channel and follow Master Warrior Clan like page should know what what what, what is African culture. Um, but, um, by now, it, in, it entails a lot of things when you're dealing with uh, African culture. So what me and uh, my monster brother, NRA Sean Calfani did was we took uh, some information from previous presentations that we had, whether it was on uh, Masi or Kofi or whatever platform we may have presented some information on, um, took it and summarized it and put it into a presentation form. So we're gonna run down some things uh, for y'all today. Did everybody that follow me know this is my saying. As I learn, we all learn. And my new saying for 2019, let's get this culture. All right. This presentation is a summary of basically what I'm just I just said. This is a this presentation is basically a summary of many presentations that was done about Africa. 
the African way of life, or you know, I said a way of life, our way of life, or the uh, 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 way of life of the ancestors, or African spirituality, or African religion, or African traditional religion, African customs, African tradition, whatever you want to encase it up under. Here are the names of those presentations, just in case you want to check out the full link videos with with tons of more information. We're just only going to touch on basic on on a few little things uh, in these presentations, and these are some of the presentations that I draw my information from that I did, and these are the platforms that I did the presentations on because I'm only going to touch on them. We'll talk about it, discuss a little bit about uh, each one of the slides, but it's not going full full in depth. Like I said, we'll talk about the slides and discuss the slides. But if you want more, more information more intel information uh you can go to these uh presentations my tv youtube channel uh my own platform these where i pull a lot of my slides from the information that i draw from just to, again this presentation is just a summary of what is african culture from previous presentations that we have done uh the oral history of council entertainment um uh, Storytelling dance by the griots and griots, African drums, instru instruments, instruments of communication, and the heartbeat of the culture presentation, an African dance, dance, dance presentation, an African fabric and weaving slash technology presentation in part two, the introduction on Yoruba part three, musical instruments in the in Mother Africa. And these are all on Kopi Pipes our TV YouTube channel. So after this presentation, the information that you may want to go back and say, well, I'm, I, want, I, I need to learn a little bit more about that. He didn't go too in deep. We talked about it, but I want to learn more. These are some of the uh, presentations that you can go on and look at the full presentations. Here, my Warrior your clan YouTube channel, African Masquerade. Is it the first performance arts or uh, is African Masquerade another form of divination and ancestor veneration, which is a favorite presentation by my a presentation of, um, for me? uh african religion african spirituality concept the how and the why part one african religion african spirituality concepts the how and why part two these are two powerful presentations to me uh to give you a basic understanding of how these religions or spirituality started or how it sparked so let's get into it the culture oh hold on before we get i'm i'm, I'm missing out my one of my slides is out of order so basically today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be we're going to well no 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 i'm 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 right i'm right well let's go the african the culture of african is very uh, uh varied and multi manifold manifolds consisting of mi mixtures of countries with various tribes that each have their own unique characteristics from the continent of africa it is the product and the diverse population that today's inhabit the continent of africa and africa diaspora African culture expresses its it in me me express in its arts and crafts folk folklores and religions clothing cuisines music and language expressions of cultures are abundant within Africa with large amounts of cultural diversity being found not only across different countries but also within single countries even though African Africans cultures are widely diverse they are also uh, when closely studied, seem to have many similarities, which they do. For example, the morals they uphold, their love and respect for their culture, as well as the strong respect that they hold for the aged and the importance of i.e. kings and chief. So that's just a basic summary, this small basic summary of uh, African culture. Now, inside of African culture, on that slide, we named a few things. So these are the bullet points that we are going to be touching in this presentation. Folklore, music, religion, arts, craft, clothing. I don't know about cuisine. I don't know if Sean got anything on cuisine. I started to do something on food, but I, I didn't get back with him. And language. I don't know if we're going to, uh, Sean did anything on language. I know I didn't do anything on language, but I know these basic four, I mean, five, one, two, three, four, five, these six bullet points I know that we're going to touch on folklore, music, religion, arts, craft, uh, and clothing. But, you know, even if we don't have anything on cuisine, we can talk about some of the foods 
uh, in Africa. If we, uh, um, you know, if we don't have any slides language, we can touch on it briefly. I'm not a linguist, uh, so I didn't really touch on that too much. Folklore. So this is the first bullet point that I'll be touching on is folklore. African folklore is a tale. Its tales and myths serve as a means of handing down or passing from generation to generation. And the stories are very important to the traditions and customs of all African people. Tricksters and animals play a common role in their folklores. West Africans have many tales about wandering trickster spirits who is associated with change and quarrel generation stories from Africa have traditionally been passed down from word from, from word of mouth. So folklores or folklores, which they intertwine folklores and folk tales or the uh, 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 um, intertwine both of those uh, stories that has been passed down from one uh, generation to the uh, to the next. Folklores again in the present. I mean, uh, in this slide says it deals with certain myths. It deals with tricksters, which we'll talk about. One folklore dealing in uh, West Africa, dealing with the uh, uh, the landmass of Ghana. We'll get into that in a minute. But it is storytelling that has been passed down from uh, one generation to the next. So when we're talking about storytelling, we have to deal with the griots. We have to deal with the griots. The griots. Or storytellers, master storytellers. So let's see what the griots uh, are. Again, we're still dealing with folklore, but I want to talk about the griots real quick before we go into a folklore story, because folklore is, again, a story that has been passed down from one generation to the next generation, and mostly of the stories are told by word of mouth. Unique in Western Africa, the griots or jali professions encompass many roles. The griots, pronounced griot, uh, have been referred to as historians and storytellers, but there are no real words in English language that includes all of their functions. A traditional griot could do everything from recounting history to comp composing music to teaching students and acting as a diplomat. So the griot has many roles. The griot is famous for storytelling, uh, for storytelling, but they are famous for uh, playing music and other things. The griot uh, has many, many, many roles that it plays in the society. They are ge a ge genealogists. They are historians, which they are our historians. They are the gatekeepers of our history. Spokespeople, ambassadors, musicians, teachers, warriors, interpreters, praise singers, masters of ceremonies, advisors, negotiators, med meditators, not every griot does all these things, but these are all examples of functions of the griot's profession and bodies. Just like I said, they entails, they have so many different roles that they have to play, but a lot of the roles that they are famous for is the, is the, uh, the gatekeepers of our history and passing down stories from one generation to the next generation. And they are famous for playing certain instruments. They are musicians. The griox is the social memory of the community and the holders of the word. The griox is the keepers of facts and important events of his time. It is it is his responsibility to pass this knowledge to the future generation, as well as that. The I'm having to call him back. Excuse me, y'all. That's my son I'm calling me. I'm calling back. Well, y'all, hold on one sec. Hold on, son. I'm gonna call you back. Okay. All right. It is his responsibility to pass this knowledge on to the future generation, as well as the past past times passed down to him by his ancestors. Griots keeps records of all birth, deaths, marriages throughout the generation of the village and family. Keep your birth rate. Your, uh, keep up with the birth, deaths, marriage throughout each uh, generation uh, of the village and family. Masters of oral tradition, the griots plays a key role in West African society. Griotis. So you have the griots and you have the griot or the griotis. 
it is a female storyteller. So a woman can be a griot or griotis as well, a storyteller as well. She is traditional scenes at a ceremony celebration of special occasions. When a woman is married, a griotis will sing to her to prepare her for her new life. West African women sing about a woman's role in a society and their relationships with husbands and husbands in law and in laws. Griotis also use songs to express their independence and self reliance or give comfort, encouragement, empowerment to other women. So they also have a role where they comfort and they encourage and they empower other women. The Sa'abi is the long poetry narrative form songs by West African women to reveal the nature of the relationships between men and woman so you have the griotis so we i know we always talk about the griot but you have women that serves in that capacity of storytelling uh storytellers as well now griots as a storytellers af after a good e evening meal and here i have here a bunch of young boys they ready to get that information african children who is ready for the story so they're getting ready and getting prepared to uh for a story for one of those folklores or folk tales they are they're ready so uh after a good evening meal with the moon shining down the people of the village ancient africa might hear the sounds of the elve drum which the drums the drums is the heartbeat of the community family you know what i'm saying you no matter what capacity um it's gonna always be the drums. The drums is present at everything that they do. A rattle of a voice that shouts, come here, come here. These were the sounds of the griot. When they heard, uh, heard the call, the children knew that they were going to hear a wonderful story with music and dancing and songs. Perhaps tonight the story will be about a Nazi, the little spider and one of the slides I talked about when we when when I started breaking down one of the, what is a folklore, so we started talking about what a folklore is. Those are stories passed down from one generation to the next. Maybe myths, uh, uh, maybe edu uh, educational life lessons involved in some of the folklores, and it, it mentioned a trickster. So those that follow a lot of West African culture, not even just West African culture, South Africa and the Car Caribbean, because the Anansi story. Um, went from West Africa into the Caribbean, South America, and even into the United States. So this is a famous story or a famous folklore, which there are many folklore stories about Inasi. Uh, and we're going to talk about the folklore story about Inasi in a minute. Uh, uh, so story will be about Anansi, the little spider. Every Everyone loves Anansi. Anansi could weave the most beautiful webs. He was the one who taught the people of Ghana how to weave the beautiful mud cloth. Anansi had a good wife, strong sons, and many friends. He got into a mess and used his wits and power to humor and escape. All right. Anansi is an African folktale char a character. He is often takes the shape of a spider and considered to be the spirit of all knowledge of stories. He is also one of the most important characters of West African Caribbean folklore. And two brothers that's on the panel while I'm presenting and I'm talking and I'm discussing. Anytime y'all want to jump in and elaborate, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, feel free to. He is also known as Anansi, uh, Kewaku Anansi, and Anansi. And in the southern United States, he is involved into Aunt Nancy. He is a spider, but often acts and appears as a man. The Nancy tale originated from, a, from the Ashanti people of the present day Ghana. The word Anansi in the Akan means spider. Hold on, y'all. He is also known as, I mean, the Anansi tales originated from the Ashanti people, present day Ghana. The word Anansi in, is the Akan and it means spider. They later spread it, other Akan groups, and then to the West Indies, 
Sur uh, Suriname, which we talked about this name here, uh, this place here, this place is in South South Africa. So those who watch the, 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 my Winty presentation, you will know that a lot of people from West Africa was targeted for a certain reason and went into South America, into Suriname, and uh, a lot of those people were from from Ghana, and those people uh, uh, um, from Ghana who practice Akumi uh, was kidnapped, brought to this place to work on the coffee plantation uh, and the sugar plantations over there in South uh, South America. So those that didn't look at the Winty presentation, go back and check out that presentation. Sierra Leone, where they were introduced by Jamaican Maroons and the Netherland Antonil and the uh the karaku uh arubu and the bonaire it is he is known as copa nancy and his wife is she marie so these stories spread it and again it ended up in the west indies and south america and sierra leone through the kidnapping trade so a lot of these people we know majority of the people was kidnapped from west africa but you had uh some that was kidnapped from central africa as well but the predominant in west africa so a lot of these stories that originated from the ashanti people uh in ghana was kidnapped and they took their stories uh with them into these different geographical locations Adansi is depicted in many different ways sometimes he looks like an ordinary spider sometimes he looked like a spider wearing cloth or with a human human face and sometimes he looks much more like a human with a spider element such as eight with eight legs so i was gonna uh actually just present the information anansi in the pot and then i meant to put a list of the anansi stories if y'all wanted to go back and look up the anansi uh anansi stories there were a lot of folk folklore uh stories dealing with uh with a nazi so this is just a little small video little small little cartoon educational video uh here about the folklore about a nazi a nazi uh in the turtle Anansi was sitting down to dinner when Turtle came to his door. Anansi knew the law of the jungle. If you have company and you have food, you must share the food with your company. Come in, Turtle. You're just in time for dinner, Anansi sighed. Turtle sat down. Thanks, Anansi. How are you? Turtle reached for a bowl of yams. I'm fine, answered Anansi. But Turtle, your hands are very dirty. You know you can't sit down to dinner with dirty hands. Please go wash them before you eat. Turtle looked sadly at his hands. They had gotten very dirty on the long walk to Anansi's house. Oh, you're right, Anansi. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Turtle slowly crawled off to wash his hands. <laughs> Remember, Nancy is a trickster now. When Turtle got back, the bowls and plates were nearly empty. Oh, uh, Nancy, you've been eating all of the food, Turtle said unhappily. Well, Turtle, you are very slow. I had to eat it before it got cold. But there's plenty left. Help yourself, said Anansi. Turtle reached for the bowl of rice. Wait, cried Anansi. Your hands are still dirty, Turtle. Turtle looked at his hands. Yes, they were dirty again because he had crawled back to the table across Anansi's dirty, unswept floors. Oh, sorry, Anansi. I'll be right back. Turtle crept back to wash again. Then he searched through his shell and found some nice soft slippers to keep his hands and feet clean. Then he started back as fast as he could go. But as soon as he was gone, Anansi had stuffed the rest of the food into his mouth. Slurp, slurp, gobble, gobble, munch, crunch, burp. When Turtle saw the empty table, he cried, Anansi, you have eaten everything. 
turtle, I could not wait any longer. The food was getting very cold. Maybe next time you come to dinner, you'll wash your hands and get to the table on time. The turtle nodded slowly and left with an empty tummy. As he walked, his hungry tummy growled and his hungry mind began to work. Mm. Anansi tricked me. He got me to wash my hands twice while he gobbled up all the food. It's time to teach Anansi a very important lesson. Turtle reached home, ate his dinner, and began to plan. The next day, Anansi found an invitation in his mailbox to go to Turtle's house for dinner. All right, he cheered. Turtle is a great cook. Anansi put on his best jacket and went to the edge of the pond. He saw Turtle down at the bottom of the pond setting the table. I'm here, Turtle. I'm here for dinner, he called. Come on down, Anansi. Your dinner is almost ready, answered Turtle. Anansi jumped into the water. Splash! But he didn't sink to the bottom. He just floated on the top of the water. Anansi kicked all eight legs and bounced as hard as he could, but he could not make himself sink. Hurry, Anansi. Dinner is getting cold, grinned Turtle as he watched Anansi splashing above him. Anansi climbed out and tried again and again and again. Splish, splash, splish, splash, splash. He could not sink to the bottom. Anansi thought, aha, I know what to do. I have big pockets in this jacket. I'll put heavy rocks in the pockets and I'll drop right down to Turtle's house. Anansi gathered big rocks and filled his pockets. Then, curse splash, he jumped into the pond. Glub, 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 he went down, down, down to the bottom of the pond where Turtle had set out a feast. This sure does look good, said Anansi as he reached for a bowl of food. Wait, Anansi! Turtle cried. You know you can't sit down to dinner with your jacket on. Please take off your jacket. But Turtle, if I take off my jacket, you must take it off if you want to eat, said Turtle. Anansi slowly took off his jacket and hung it on the back of his chair. He popped right back up to the top of the water. Anansi floated and watched his turtle eat every bite of the feast. He had plenty of time to think while he watched. Finally, he climbed out of the water and started back home. Turtle tricked me out of a meal just like I tricked him. I guess my mama was right. What goes around comes around. And that's the end of that. So that was a little story. I just wanted to show a little visual, you know, let cartoon something simple education without put the whole information up there. But again, there are so many different Anansi, Anansi stories. And before the video end, I'll uh, come back. I mean, before uh, the show end, I'll come back and, and uh, share a bunch of names if y'all want to look up a bunch of uh, Anansi stories. Uh, dang, I forgot to show uh, the creator. The brother wanted to know who uh, was the creator of the last show. I mean, all uh, 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 that lit uh, cartoon. All right, music. So we deal with folklore, but let's go back real quick. We deal with folklore. So the bullet points today, I broke down for those that just came in. The show is what is what is what is African culture. So we we uh, gave a I gave a brief summary of what is African culture, and then the bullet points. That was uh, that I drawn from that slide. So we're we're going into so many layers to African culture. So we're not gonna be able to touch as much as we can. We're gonna touch and we're gonna move on. We can discuss. We, we, we y'all can ask questions. We'll ask questions. So the bullet punch was folklore. Folklore was the first first one. Folklore. We're gonna deal with music. We're gonna deal with uh, religion. 
uh, we're going to deal with uh, arts and crafts. We're going to deal um, uh, deal with uh, I'm missing a few of them, but we're going to deal with, with with much as what we can. So with the folklore, we just I just deal with the folklore again. I gave you the summary of what the uh, African folklore is. Folklore are stories stories that are being passed down from one tradition to, uh, one tradition to the next tradition. Most of the stories of folklores are told uh, by uh, by mouth. Um, there are life lesson stories, just like the Anansi story. Anansi learned something. He learned the life lesson then. What goes around comes around. Anansi is a trickster. So we talked about the Griots. The Griots are famous for storytelling. There are many roles that I expressed a few minutes ago, a historian, a warrior, uh, a, a, a musician, uh, a teacher, a historian, etc. Etc. They tell stories. He also showed the griotis. A griotis is a storyteller as well as inspiring other women to do other great, uh, great things, uh, giving out important information, dealing with relationships, etc. etc. Uh, but the, they are also storytellers. So I broke down storytellers because with folklore as a storytellers, you can't talk about that without talking about those great griots and great griotis. And then we went into the Anansi story. And again, there are many, many, many Anansi stories. And the Anansi story originated in Ghana by the Ashanti people. So now we're going to go into the second bullet point, which is music. Music is an important in a life of African people. Nearly everyone in Africa sings and plays one or two instruments. Africa makes music in the homes, at the marketplace, and at social gatherings. Also, music plays an important part of political, religious ceremonies and life, and others are in more singular fashion entertainment. Much has roles in healing and trials, announcing presence, and very important likes the chief and kings, wedding, funerals, and visiting important people. Musical instruments in Africa are not only used for making music, they are also used to communicate with both man and spirit, translating and amending daily experiences in the events. Uh, the music instruments may be restrictions to the age, gender, or social status of the player. The instruments range in sizes and complexity from handheld objects to large, elaborated devices constructed of many parts of events today. They are mostly crafted form of uh, form natural material using age old methods. Most widely spread play instruments in Africa are the drums, the xylophone, the member of uh, the embara, the rattles, the shakers. The one strings musical bowl play all over the uh, a continent, but now nearly abandoned, was once responsible for all the vocal scales that are used today in African uh, music. So African music plays a role in, you can say, everyday, everyday life. It plays a role in their politics. It plays a role in their religion. It plays a role uh in their uh, cer uh, ceremony, you know, it plays a role in their uh, festivals. It plays a role when they're working. So, music is a it's an important part, or it is a way of life. It is a, a, a part of the African culture as well. The kora, known in Europe as the West African harp lute, it is also an instrument exclusive to the hereditary musical lineage of the five principal griots. Fam families among the demanding, demanding people of West Africa. So we're talking about the Griots again. We were talking about the Griots in the folklore bullet point a while ago. And two of those slides I showed you, I showed you, we'll go back and show you. This is what th this here on the right hand side is called a Kora. So the Griots were not only famous for music telling and the gatekeepers of our history or the historians, they were also musicians as well, and they played a few instruments. And this is one of the most popular instruments that the griots play and are still playing today. It is called the kora. So I'll go back and show this real quick. Then we'll get back. You see this brother here, this brother's a, a griot, and he is holding one of the famous instruments, which is called the kora.
All right. Although the instruments originated in Guana, the music is deeply rooted in the history of ancient Mali and as much of the re repository dates back to the establishment of the 13th century Malian Empire by the Sudariat Kita. The Kora involved the Kora involved out of a predecessor, the Nating or the Igoni, and the five string loop, which dates back to the ancient Egyptian time. A particular feature unique to this instrument is the division of the 21 strings into two parallel planes and either side, uh, side of the rising notch bridges with 11 strings and the left uh, and 10 on the right. There's a scale or mode of abstain by plucking the strings alternate with right and left hand using only thumbs and index finger. The nylon strings formerly of guts, guts and attached to the wooden necks by the adjustable uh, leather tuning. So here is a, the description of what they was talking about. 11 strings on one side, 10 strings on the other side. Um, this here, you have the leather tuning rings here. You have the heart, heart neck here. You have uh, the knotted bridge, uh, the playing of strings right here. Again, you have... Uh, 11 on one side and 10 on the other side. The horizontal brace, the ostrich uh, strings at the bottom, uh, um, which is at the bottom of the notch bridge. So you have the, the strings at the top of the notch bridge and strings at the bottom of the notch bridge. You have the iron ring at the bottom. You have the sound hole right here. The sound comes out of. You have the hand pot uh, here. Uh, calabash and this bottom piece is made out of calabash gourd and again this is called the cora this is a famous instrument that the griots hold i mean use and they also use another instrument too the xylophone which we're not going to talk about in this presentation and if you want more information on that i'll show the slides again at the end where i draw all my information from again this our presentation is a summary of all of our presentations that we have done in uh, uh, talking about African culture. Okay, African drums. We can't talk about music without talking about the African drums. We talked about, we just got through talking about the Kora. So, but we can't move on without talking about the African drums. The African drums are one of the most oldest instruments in the world. Again, the African drums are one of the oldest instruments in the world. Traditional African drums serve as a musical instrument object for ceremonies and as a method of communication. And keep this in mind, method of communication. The drum is a method patient. Some drums were part of everyday lives and others held special significance giving power to its owners or created to honor ancestors. In many instances, the traditional African drums are connected to spiritual endeavors and medical purposes. The drums also had roles in ceremonies such as birth. So birth and rites are doing birth. The drums are present. And again, um, I keep stating the drums are the heartbeat of the community. The drums are a present in every aspect of African way of life that you can think of. Weddings, funerals, rites of passage, rituals, ancestors, lower deities, creator slash supreme beings, war initiations, sacrifice and festivals. Today, drums continue to be used in African life. They are played uh, at baptisms, weddings, festivals, and dancing throughout the world. The drum was the heartbeat and the daily life among many indigenous in, uh, cultures, including the native people of, African, of the African continent. The many different variations of the traditional drums were used for daily needs. The most mentioned popular drums were the Igomi drum, the talking drum, the Kabal, uh, the Kabang, the Kabang, the Kabang logo drum, and the Dijambe drum. So these are the three different drums right here. These are the popular drums: the Igombe drum, uh, the talking drum, 
in the uh the, the I mean the Kabang the K Bang logo drum, the Igongo Igamo drum, and the Jambe drum. My words getting all twisted up today. All right, the talking drum. We're gonna talk about just one brief drum. If you want more information, I'll show the slides on two different platforms where we had um uh, uh where we ran down and went through the drums and went deep into the drums, what a lot of the drums were made of, made out of, uh, the history behind the drums, and et cetera, et cetera. A talking drums, hourglass shaped drums that is squeezed under the arms to change the pitch. Different versions can be found over over most of West Africa. The version on the top uh, is the is the is the northwest is the northwest of Ghana, and it is called uh dundo this in here the version below is from senegal it is called the tommy this version here the talking drum was said that it is the tone that could travel to four to five miles so i picked this particular drum out this talking drum because this drum was used as a form of communication and on my presentation that i did the drum the, the drums is the oldest instrument of the oldest instrument the heartbeat of the community whatever said or should i have these long names for these presentations um i talked about how they use these drums when our ancestors was kidnapped and was forced to work on these different plantations under these horrible conditions so they use these drums these different types of drums uh made these different type of drums uh so the sound could travel from far and near so this talking drum is a famous drum that they used on the plantations and again i said that this was the first form of a cell phone you know this is what i'm saying this was the first form of cell phone because they communicated with these drums to other plantations and they said that the sound could travel from four to five miles. So they will communicate with different people on different plantations by using these drums, by communicating with these drums. A lot of these communication was about slave revolts that was about to take place and et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to talk about, cause this is one of the famous drums. The, the Jambe I know is the most talked about drum in Africa. Um, but I wanted to uh, talk about the talking drum real quick because I like the talking drum because it communicated with uh it communicated long distance from plantation to plantation. Again, the sound traveled from four to five miles. Drums. Drums are very important in, in African dance. There are the beats of the dance and one of the only instrument used since the beginning of african dance again they are the beat of the dance and one of the only instruments used since the beginning of african dance drums have been used since the beginning of african dance in early times a drum message was used to send messages from town to town as i specifically stated that's why i showed uh those two talking drums the dun dun uh drum at the top here which originated out of uh northwest uh of ghana uh and this in here the tama which originated a uh, talking drum the tama which originated in senegal there are four main categories of instruments plus percussion the autophone, the cordophone, the aerophone, and the membrane phone. So that they categorize their instruments that they use again. We're still in the bullet point of music. So their music instruments that they use for them to sing and for them to dance in different festivals, ceremonies, or just in everyday life, they categorize their, their instruments was in four different categories. The autophone, the colophone, the aerophone, and the membrane phone. Remember though, remember that. The autophone. 
And these are some slides that I copy and just paste from my original presentation that I had um, uh, Instruments of Mother Africa. I think that's the name of the presentation that I did. So I just copied the slides that I had real quick and pasted them in, 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 in this and in, on this new slide. Idle phones. Idle phones, active and self-sounding resonated slide solids are divided into rhythm idle phone instruments such as, and remember these, slit drums, rattles, shakers, scrapers, clappers, bells, and gongs. For more information on those, I went in depth on each one of those instruments. You have to go to that presentation, which is on the platform, which I, I mean, which is on the Kofi Pisa TV platform. I'll show you, I give the links back to those presentations for further, uh, for you to go and further your information on these in uh, instruments. So again, the idle phone, they're broke down into four, remember? The idle phone, the cordial phone, the aero phone, and the membrane phone. So the idle phone, you have the slit drums or drums, the rattles, shakers, scrapers, clappers, bells, gongs. You have the cordial phones, which is the second bracket, which is harps, musical bowls, lyres, fiddles, lutes, and zetheros. Again, I went in depth on all of those instruments on a previous presentation. Aerophones, aerophones, wind, they are, they are called wind instruments, including flutes, whistles, reed pipes, trumps, and horns. Aerophones are classed as musical instruments in which vibrating mass of air produces the initial sound, including bull roars and silence. Membranes, these skin cover instruments from the best of the heart, uh, African musicals, Music in general comes in three forms, hourglass, goblets, and kettles. Now, real quick, phone, cordial phones, aerial phones, and membrane phones. I talked about two instruments. I talked about the cordial instrument that the griots use, and I talked about the uh, I talked about the drum. It's the oldest instrument in the world, and it is the heartbeat of the drums and the heartbeat of the community. And I name one specific drum, but we're talking about drums. So which particular, um, which particular bracket would the drums that that that, that drum will go up on? Will it go up under the idle phone? Will it go up on the cordial phone? Will it go up on the aerial phone? Or will it go up on the membrane? I'm asking someone in the chat real quick, and we'll move on quick. So out of those four categories, those four brackets, which one of those musical instruments, the cordial, the cordial instrument? The choral instrument, which one would it be up under? Will it be up under the again the idle phone, the choral phone, the aero phone, or the membrane phone? One of these four brackets uh here, one of these four main categories. Someone said the quarter phone. My, uh, my name is Jay said quarter phone. So you saying the choral would be up on the quarter phone. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? I know I got a slight delay. But peace, 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 peace to you, sister. My name is Jade. And my name is Jade. You is right, sis. It goes up under the quarter phone. Let's go back real quick. Just trying to make this a learning lesson as well. Uh, here is the quarter. It is some form of a heart and a loop. So it will fall exactly, it will fall up on the, the quarter phone. Again, the categories are broken into four, and she got it right. The quarter phone is a string instrument, including harps, musical bowls, lyres, fiddles, lutes, and singers. It is a mixture of a heart and a lute. So it is a string instrument, so it will go up under the category of a quarter phone. So and I I I, I hate that I put it back on here because I what the drums would go up on. I just somebody seen that. So what would the drum go up on? We went and we showed the drum. We went into the we went into the talking drum here. One made in Ghana, one made in Senegal, talking drum. So what would the drum go up on? I already gave it away. I mean, it was already on the slide. I didn't know there would be a pop quiz. Now I'm just making sure y'all paying attention, man. Some of uh, my name, Jay, said membrane phone. 
Somebody say out of phone, out of phone. Miss Trismus, peace, peace, sis, and Zane, peace, brother. You are correct. You got that. Uh, you got that one incorrect. My name is Jade. It goes up on the auto phone. Auto phone. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It is an active and self-sounding resonated solid, or divided into two rhythmic idophonic instruments. All right. Let's move on. African dance occupies, and we're still up under the bracket of music because we did folklore. We're doing music, and music, it, it's, I mean, you got the singing aspect. You got the dancing aspect. You got the musical instruments aspect. So many different musical uh, instruments uh, uh, that are key components. The drums, the chora, the, xyloph the xylophones, certain types of lutes. You know, you got all types of things. African dance occupies central place in culture throughout the African continent. Everybody, energy and graceful beauty flows in rhythms. In African dance, it is a means marking life experience, encouraging bunny crops, honoring kings and queens, celebrating weddings, markings, rites of passage, and other ceremonial occasions. So, African dance, you know, it is it it is entangled in everything, abundance of crops. So when they're out there uh, uh, in the fields, you know, or reaping the harvest, you know, you have the drums, you have dancing and singing goes on because there are certain types of ceremonies that they give, you know what I'm saying? For I call them joyous uh, ceremonies where they go in to reap the crops. They go in as a collective effort. Everyone gathers together for a collective effort, for a common goal is for their survival. And they go out and they plant certain things and do certain things in the fields. And then at the end of the season, they reap the harvest or they reap the benefits from the hard work that they put in. So they sing and they dance and they praise the ancestors and they praise the creator and they pray, uh, 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 um, they, uh, 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 um, uh, sing and praise and give honor to the Lord deities and etc. Uh, honoring the kings and queens, celebrating weddings. So they're they're also an aspect of honoring the kings and queens. They're celebrating they're uh, celebrating weddings. So in weddings, they are dancing, marking rites of passage. So those different demarcation stages of life, whether it's the birthing ceremony, whether it's the naming ceremony, where is the adult ceremony. Where is the uh, circumcision ceremony? Where is the purification, uh, not the purification, but the uh, scarification ceremony? Where is the uh, um, elder ceremony or where is uh, a funeral rite ceremony? Those aspects of dancing is there. Dance is also done purely in enjoyment. Ritual dances include many dances utilizing mass in a way of achieving communication with the gods. Most traditional African dance can be divided into two four, four to into four major categories: ritual dance, ceremony dance, communal dance, and griot dance. Yes, the griots have a dance. So the, the traditional African dance, y'all, is broken into four parts: ritual dance, ceremonial dance. Communal dance and griot dance. I talked about this in a previous presentation. Dance express local history. This is the griot dance. So it is like a performance art. They are telling stories. The griot dance are actually again griots are storytellers. So they are performing and they are telling story through their dance artistry. artistry. Ritual dance, the most ancient African dance there is. Ritual dance are initiated by informs and by the informed and the elders. They are usually religious in nature and are designated for specific occasions that explicit and facultate facultates the most powerful expressions of African people. So again, is the most ancient. African dance, there is the ritual dance, and it is, excuse me, it is initiated by those who are informed and those who are elders. Remember that 
ritual dance. Religious or spiritual importance, the ritual dance is the people, uh, the people cannot perform it unless they have big understanding. Remember, it said the informed and the elders have a big understanding of their African religious religion are not exclusive. Individuals frequently participate in several distinct forms of worship. They are not perceived as conflicting in any way. Rather, they are considered uh, accumulated means of achieving the sum result, which improves the quality of life. Ceremony dance. So we did the ritual. Now we're in the ceremony. Those dances are broken into four categories. Ceremony dance is performed at an event such as weddings, anniversaries, rites of passage. And remember now, remember now what I'm saying. Rites of passages, coming of age celebrations, and welcomed the visitors to uh, combinations of successful hunts and other happenings shared by the whole world. So the ceremonial dance now is a celebrations. Those are the the uh, uh, the uh, rites of one of the rites of passage. One of the first well the rites of passage. The coming into age uh, rites of passage. The the second rite, which will be the adult rite. So uh, you have a ceremonial dance there. The welcoming of visitors, those that may not be from that place that they are welcome. The uh, a combination uh, of uh, successful hunts where they go out and they hunt game or uh, certain things and they come back with the success of the hunt and they they dance. And others happening shared the whole tribe. The ceremony dance is also expressed by communities more than moves of individuals or a couple. So it is a collective effort. It is a community. It is a community that gets together and there's not a mood of one individual. In the village throughout the continent, the sounds and the rhythms of the drums express moves, people, the drums is sign life. It is the heartbeat of the community, as I keep saying. Uh, Griox. So we went from we went from the rituals to the ceremonies. Now we're in the Griox, the Griotic dance. This traditional dance and stories are kept in the forms of music and dance containing elements of history and the metaphorically statements that carries and pass on culture of the people through generation. Griot, so they are not just saying it by word of mouth. They are expressing the history of that culture, the history of that clan, the history of that tribe, the history of their mythos through dance as well. And not only represent historical documents, but they are ritual dramas and dances. They are stories of historical events. Communion, which is the last one, it is an expression. The life of the community, more than the mood of an individual, of a couple, the same as the, uh, the ceremonial. In villages throughout the continent, the sound and the rhythm of the drums express the mood of the people. The drum is the sign of life. It is beat. It it beats. It is the heartbeat of the community, such as the power of the drums to invoke emotions to touch the soul of these who hear the, ryth the rhythms. Now, here is a traditional female and male Zulu dance. And that African dance, dance, dance uh, presentation and the African dance, dance, dance reloaded presentation, you can go and I have a plethora of African dances and I go through each African dance and I, I give them uh, which one, is it a communion? Is it a ceremonial? Is, a, is it a griotic dance? Is it a ritual dance? I break them down in the different brackets. I go from different, from South Africa, North Africa, Central Africa, and West Africa, where I collected a lot of these dances, and I went a little bit in detail on those dances and illustrated some of those dances, but I won't be doing it in this, but this is one. This is something new that I found for the Zulu people in South Africa. This is a traditional female and male Zulu dance. See, 
they sound good too, don't they, y'all? All right, I ain't gonna show all of it. It's kind of long. All right, religion. So we went from folklore, we went to music. Now let's go to religion. I know a lot of people don't like to use the word religion, and I know during a certain period of time we wanted to resist the word religion, so we came up with spirituality. And a lot of people know, and a lot of people may disagree with me. Some may do, some may don't, but uh. This is a time where we wanted to resist the word religion because we was indoctrinated by three of the main organized Western religion. That is Christianity, Islam and Judaism. But majority of us are Christianity. So the diaspora African, which is us, we come up with the term to resist against the word religion and in case it was spirituality. So. You know, and I, I don't say this in numerous videos and especially in the, uh, African religion, uh, African spirituality, the concepts, the how and why, which I think a lot of people need to go and look at that part one and power part two. It is uh, both presentations are powerful presentation to give you a basic. It really gives you a basic understanding. I broke down basic understanding of where these ideals and concepts come from, you know, so the uh, diaspora African come up with the word African spirituality. So we come up with the word African spirituality instead of the word religion. And we come up with the word African spirituality because uh, a lot of us are descendants of Africa. And a lot of our ancestors was displaced through due to the kidnapping trade. And due to the kidnapping trade, we have lost a sense of who we are. So we don't know what tribe or what clan or what country uh, that we come from on the continent that we are referring to now as Africa. So, and I say it's not fair to call it African spirituality because, um, again, you have 30,000 ethnic groups in Africa. 30,000. So each tradition mirrors each other, but they have their own different way of life or their own way of their ancestors. So when we say African spirituality, we are basically uh, adding each 
and we like it's one head they have one religion and again or one spiritual system and they are one way of life when there are thirty thousand ethnic groups there are over 50 some countries on the continent and they do not uh operate in the same they mirror some but they do not operate the same so we have to go and learn their indigenous names and just start speaking the indigenous name and the land mass that it originated in but religion is an old is is old and mankind it is found wherever organized communities exist religion emotion is among the most extensive and profound that has been experienced the development of that emotion is a very real sense one aspect of history of humanity that has been internalized more than the another atrs and this is the word that they do use even though you may have a brother from senegal you may have a brother from bugano fason you may have someone from nigeria you may have someone from togo you may have someone from benin you may have someone from tanzania wherever you may have these people from they use the indigenous names but a lot of those also they prefer to um it now as atrs african tradition religion so the africans or, or the continental africans they use the term african traditional religion atr so if you hear a lot of people speak about atrs 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 that was atr yes african traditional religion I spoke to a, a brother from Ghana, Ghana, and I think I broke. I spoke yes, and I spoke to a brother from Nigeria, and those two brothers said that yes, they use this term African tra traditional uh, religion, but they also use their indigenous names as well. All right, and uh, religion, beliefs, and practices of the people of Africa. It is not primarily for the individual but for the community the community and the traditional society there are no irregularity people uh i, I mean irregular irig oh my tongue is getting tired up today irregulous religious irreligious people <laughs> to be humans is to belong to the whole community and to do so below involves participating in the belief ceremonies rituals and festivals that communicate to be human it is to belong to the whole community and to do so belongs involved participating in the beliefs ceremonies rituals and festivals of that community family traditional relates to any long-standing culture habits of any people and that's what i related to family as a tradition it is relating to anything that is long-standing cultural habits so their way of life is nothing but long-standing cultural habits something that they have been doing from time and remoral ever since they come up with these concepts and these ideals and started putting these concepts and ideals into practices and these practices has been lasting from generation to generation to generation they are nothing but long-standing cultural habits so we can we can use that if you don't want to use the word african spirituality if you don't want to use the word african traditional religion you know what i'm saying until you find out and do a DNA test see where you come from see what your people actually practice what was the name of their indigenous system you know what i'm saying you can use long-standing cultural habits or cultural cultural habits because that's all it is just the concepts of ideals that a group or community came up agreed with started putting those things into practice and it became a way of life and they have been doing this and passing it on from generation to generation african traditional religion heritage traces its origins to the human quest for meanings of self-understanding the question which every people have to ask about themselves and the world in which they live since down of human consciousness how was the world created how did humans and i didn't even know i put this slide on here how did humans and non-humans form and life comes to be what is the meaning of life and death where is also posed by the african forebearers and the answers given by these questions came out of their own unique experience and reflection the answer pregnated with philosophical and theological means. 
so took the forms of myths and stories so basically this is something this is a slide that i had in part one of african religion african spiritualities the concepts of the how and the why so this is kind of explaining how the their way of life or how the day religion or how did their african spirituality or how did their african traditional religion or how that their way of the ancestors or their way of life started was through questioning as they went on they started questioning certain things they started questioning how was the world created they started questioning what is the purpose of life and death they started questioning where do you go after death they started questioning how do a woman birth a whole human out of them they started questioning and started to acknowledge a unseen or an invisible power by catastrophic events that occurred in their environment heavy rainstorms tropical storms flooding earthquakes and etc so they started saying it must be some type of power that are controlling these things in nature uh uh the birth of non-human existence animals plants where did they come from so they started questioning so they started and through trial and error of certain things and life lessons they started coming up and you could say philosophically uh uh uh, uh are coming up with some type of theology that we call religion today or what we call an african spirituality or african spiritual traditions or african uh, uh long-standing cultural habits these are things that they just these questions that they took and they began to put them in their mythos and their mythology and started creating these different stories of how the world was creator created who is the creator uh the hierarchy of the creator the lesser deities up under that hierarchy then you have the ancestors who the ancestors go into the ancestors world and still have their hands dealt in human affairs there's no such thing as rest in peace in most of the african cultures i said most I'm not saying all, but in most of the African culture, there's no such thing as rest in peace. You still have a duty to fulfill when you transition and go into what we call the Igungun. Took forms of myth stories, clear their myths and stories would not have, have come about if the people had not asked questions about their existence. So this is how the religion came into existence by them pondering and asking questions and things that was going on in their environment and things that they seen on an everyday basic and things that they could not explain five in, in uh interrelated elements of atr african tradition religion belief these are the essential parts of ATR expressions how what Africans thinks of the universe and their attitudes toward life and the connecting with the belief of belief in a God, spirits, human life, magics, and life after death. Things that I'm breaking down out of already actually broke down in the in the previous slide. Uh, but these are some of the elements of the ATR or the African traditional life practices. We know ceremonies and festivals these manifest through the ways of people expressing their beliefs and including prayers yes africans pray yes africans pray yes africans pray you know some people you know think that africans don't pray you know but they do sacrifice and offering ceremonies rituals and observance of various customs religious objects and places those objects such as shrines uh, Amulets and Sarah, these are objects that placed regardless the holy or sacred, which are rarely used except for religious purpose. With some of these objects and places could be man-made, others are taken from the natural environment, such as trees. Values and morals. Values and morals are very important in African culture. That's why I don't take a lot of these people in the so-called conscious community serious that say that they are African or African descent. I don't take them serious because when you talk about the tradition or the way of life or the custom or African tradition, religion or African spirituality or the African spiritual systems of uh, the their, the Africans way of life or the way of the, the way of life of their ancestors, 
I do not take them serious because good moral character are, is, is cemented into their systems. Values and morals are cemented in those. And I, I didn't put anything in here dealing with how they build and cultivate character. You can uh, peruse this channel or go to Kofi Paisa TV. We have an uh, excellent three-part series on good character and, 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 and uh, moral values. Part one, part two, and part three, where we break down and we go into those on all three shows. Values and morals, they are religious ideals, and I also have a, a presentation that also is called Iwa Pele uh, with the Ifa tradition, which means good character. And I go in and talk about their tradition and how they cultivate uh, good character and what good character and moral values mean. These are religious ideals which provide direct directions to people on how to lead their lives and how to relate to one another. They include issues such as love, justice, dissents, crimes and punishment, character, good and evil, integrity, religious officials and leaders. These are often trained who conduct religious matters such as ceremonies, sacrifice, rituals, formal prayers and divinations. Some call them Babaluau, some call them African uh, priests, kings, chiefdoms, uh, so forth. These are some of the African traditions or African spiritual systems or African tradition religions or the way of the ancestors. These are some, again, that I'm not even breaking the surface. These, you have over 30,000 ethnic groups in Africa. Over 30,000 some ethnic groups on the continent that we call Africa. So these are some of the indigenous systems here. You have Odani. So be looking for that. This is my next presentation um, by the Igbo people. Uh, you got the Ngami by the Zulu. You got that Rutima by the Sira, uh, uh, the people from Senegambia. You got the Bakongo tradition. You got the Mbuti tradition, which is in Central Africa. You got the Ove tradition by the Ashanti, which brother, uh, brother Ben AKA Black Panther have already did. You have the Wente presentation, which I just did on the last show last Sunday. So if you didn't check that presentation out, check that presentation out. It is or a synchronization of the Ikume Budan system, which created the Wente system through uh, via the Atlantic uh, kidnap and trade. So, and this Wente is a South America tradition out of Surana. Uh, Akumi, which is a Khan tradition. Ifa, which is the Yoruba people in Nigeria. You got the Vudan, which is from the, the, uh, the uh, uh, from Fon, uh, 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 Togo, I mean from Togo or Benin by the Fon of the U people. You got the Masa, which their tradition is actually named after their tribe, Masa. You got the Kikuyu people, which is their tradition is the Kikuyu. You have the uh, the Nile people are the secrets uh Nile people of East Africa. I mean not Nile, but the Chewy people of East Africa. Their system is called Nile or the Gulu Wankulu. So these are some of the indigenous names of the religion, African religion, African tradition religion, the way of the ancestors, the the way of the way of life, African spirituality, African spiritual systems, whatever you want to call it. So we already, if you hadn't looked at the Obey, it is on the Master Warrior Clan channel. Brother Ben did that presentation. Wenty presentation I did last week. It's on here as well. You can go check that out if you want more information on that. Uh, uh, Odenani presentation by the Igbo people. That is my next presentation coming soon, maybe in the, in the next two or three weeks. Uh, I'll be presenting that presentation. I'll be presenting going down the line. Also, I already did some on the Akun people, but I actually did some on Ghana. Well, actually, I did some on the Akan. So, but I implemented the Akun. So, if you want to learn anything about the Akun, you can go to Kofi Pice TV and look at the Ghana something presentation, and it's on there. Or I, I even give a little bit on the African religion, African spirituality, the how and the uh, concepts of how and the why, part one and part two. Ifa is on. I it's on the next. I show it on the slides. The links again. Voodoo. I did some on voodoo. I broke down voodoo. The, uh, the word voodoo had to become voodoo, 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 etc. How it ended up in Haiti, uh, and etc. But it originated in West Africa, not in Haiti. It originated in West Africa, 
with the people in Togo and Benin, the Fon people. Masa, Masa. Um, I may get into that a little bit later on. I think I touched on the Kikuyu people one time before, I think. Uh, I already did a presentation on the Chui people, on the Nao people, the secret society, and the Gulu Wankulu tradition by them. So it's on this channel if you want to check that out. Voodoo, 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 Voodoo is practiced by the U people of Eastern and Southern Ghana and Southern and Central Togo and the Jing speaking people and the Fon people of Southern Central Togo and Southern Central Benin. Voodoo means spirit and is the deity in Voodoo. Voodoo in West Africa involves from the ancient tradition of ancestors worship and animism. And animism, you will hear them attach that word animism to everything dealing with African culture because a lot of the culture believes in that everything has a spirit animated or in in animated or inanimated um so voodoo uh voodoo originated in west africa then it spread it uh spread it in uh to haiti and etc so um it is practiced by the fun and practiced by the u uh u people the gun people and the mena uh the mena people also voodoo of Vodan, it means spirit now. It means the essence of God or the essence of the creator, the spirit. So that's all voodoo mean, and people have a misconception of it. And I think I did a great job of breaking it down and clearing up the misconception for those who think voodoo or Vodan is evil. I'm not going to read the rest of it, but uh, we can go uh, lay, uh, into it. I talked a little bit about it last week also because it is without the without the Vudan and without the Akume system, uh, there will be no Wenti system that I presented on last week. Wenti is a new African tradition. Um, again, it is a synchronization of the Voodoo and the Akume system. The Akan uh, people uh, in Ghana and the, um, the, the people, uh, uh, the U, the Fon, the Mena, uh people that's in togo and in benin the synchronization of those two, two traditions created another uh african tradition divination we can't go without talking about african religion african traditional religion african spirituality spiritual african spiritual system the way of the ancestors uh the africans way of life without not talking about divination it is also a part of that. The history of Ifa divination among the Yoruba can be said to be as old as the people themselves. The Yoruba believe that Ifa, otherwise known as Arulima, was one of the 400 divine divinities who came from Oran, which is the heaven, to Aya, which is the earth. Odulimari, the supreme being. So you have Odulimari and you have Oran. Oran and Udimari is one and the same. Some stories or some old dudes uh, are different. Some old dudes say Odemari is uh, the supreme god, and uh, or Oleron is the supreme god, and Odemari is the creator. Had charged each one of the divinities with particular functions to be performed on earth. Odudewa records that Ashu, that is one of the Orishas, one of the Yoruba divinities, was the universal police and the keeper of the Ashe. Which is the divine power, which which uh, which I know we say Ashe, uh, but Ashe also means divine power, with which Odemari creates the universe and maintain its physical laws. Ifa was put in charge of divination because of his greater wisdom, which he acquired as a result of his presence. So this is according to one of the Odus, which is the stories of. The uh of, of the Yoruba people, and again, there are different Odus. And according to this story, um Oduduwa was present when Odemari was creating the world. This is why he has all the wisdom that uh I mean not Odemari, uh I mean Oduduwa, uh, but um Orulima, according to one of the stories of Created the universe, maintained the physical laws. Ifa puts in charge the divination because of his great wisdom, which acquires a result of his presence. When Odemari created the universe, Arulima therefore knew all the hidden secrets of the universe. This is why his praise name is Akiri uh, Fanu Sogbon, 
the small one whose mind is full of wisdom. And there are so many different. Well, I only know of two old dudes uh, surrounding Arulima. One of them is he was a big headed, a uh, small, small boy, you know, big headed. His head was full of knowledge because he was present doing the uh, doing uh, 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 creation. Therefore, he knew all that was hidden secrets of the universe. This is why his great. OK, we went into that. He for divination is as old as the Yoruba race itself and is originated perhaps too far back in history to be exact. And during the divination system, it is said that Arulima is the one that is giving the answers. And the divination system is nothing but a calculation of mathematics. Again, a calculation of mathematics. Again, a calculation of mathematics. Nothing spooky. They are dealing with numbers, mathematics. Divination, divination implements difference at each levels of the priesthood. Yet all implements may be applied for revelations and inquires a divinity. The high priest utilized the key inkies, and I'm about to Sean, inkies, palm nuts, and opon ephas, divining boards, and uh, uh, or the opele, divining chain. So these are some of the methods that the diviners of the Babaluals use uh, doing their divination system. You have the inke, which is the palm nuts. You have the opon ephah, which is the divining board. You have the opele, which is the divining chain. You have uh, the Olorishas, the priests, the priestess utilized the uh, 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 the long, and I'm pronouncing that wrong, which is the six quarry shells. The Abarisha begins with the Obe Ad Obe Abata from the fundamental practice of divination. However, the Obe or the Obe Abatas are also used by all levels of the priestly order. All right, this is a uh, screenshots from my the introductions to Ifa part three, which is on Kofi Pisa TV. I have part one, part two, and a part three. So I have three different shows going into three different sections dealing with Ifa. So you have Opon Ifa, which is the divination tray. So here is the divination tray, and this person here considered to be in the middle. This is a Rulima. Remember, Arulima has all the knowledge and the wisdom because according to one of the old dudes, someone has something to say? I said I heard somebody mouth on me. But according to one of the old dudes, that he uh, knows all because he was present when Odimari or Olivran was creating the uh, the world. So this is said to be uh, uh, Arulima in the middle. Divinations. Divination trades, cars, and wood. I'm not going to read all that again. You can go to that uh, presentation and you can get all of this. This is the is the Eeyore sun, this, which is the divine, the divination powder, the powder that they use, certain type of things that they use uh, from off the bamboo, uh, uh, eating by the termites and creating this, 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 this powder. Um, and uh, using this power to mark. And again, you can see the different markings. I go through the uh, those different markings when we talk about the mathematic calculations. When we go through the old dudes, you got 16 major and you got 240 uh, minor, which equals up to 256 old dudes. So I go through those 200, not thoroughly, but I go through those 256 old dudes, 16 minor, major, and 240 minor. And I talk about the different calculations and the number, what the letter one represents, what the letter the, the one slash represent, and what the two slashes represent. Voodoo. We talked about voodoo a while ago. Also, voodoo has a divination system. I mean, most of the traditions mirror each other. I said most, not all. I said most, not all. So voodoo has a divination system too, and it is similar to Yoruba people that practice Ifa. The voodoo system of divination is dedicated to the deity Fa. So you got Ifa or Orulima, and now you got Fa for the uh, for the divination deity of of uh, of, of the voodoo system. It's said to have pre presented the tribes with some special palm nuts brought down from the heavens. 
the same thing according to some of the old dudes uh of uh uh damn boy slipping my mind at the time um divine boy system i mean the diviners of both systems is supposed to throw the nuts sean you got something to say no nah, man i'm waiting on you oh, okay I'm, I'm wrapping it up i told you i had a whole bunch of darn slides Poem libations African uh, libations practice their sharp distinctions between some things that are done with the right hand and other things that are done only with the left hand. Libations pouring the right hand because it is handed reserved to African traditions such as activities as offering, eatings, and drinking. Libations often accompanies offerings of food and other things considered good and worthy and higher to power. Both libations should not be confused with those other offerings of with entire ceremonies in which it may be formed apart. For example, for earlier known times, libations are always poured as a part of the rituals which marks the African cycle of life. Naming ceremonies, initiating, initiation ceremonies, marriage ceremonies, transition ceremonies, funerals. Libations also poured at other occasions such as to mark a settlement of a dispute before chopping down trees, individuals parts of the forest at the installment of the chiefs and at many festivals of african calendars at the opening of the voodoo the shango the kondambala and other african spiritual gatherings and indeed every ceremony of gathering in the african life so pouring and libations you can see the pouring of libations in african culture african tradition african religion through the naming ceremonies through the marriage ceremonies where one elder is transitioning and becoming an ancestor, the funeral rite, the funeral rites, um, and other different things, installing chiefs and kings, uh, and uh, et cetera. And it is poured with the right hand and not with the left hand. But you can also pour libations to the creator. You can pour libations to the lesser deities, the abusums, the nectars, uh, uh, the uh the orishas the the voodons or the luau's and etc etc um masquerades masquerades are certain things uh it's also a part of is it it's actually an honoring of the ancestors it's also they tell stories through different cosmologies and etc i'm not gonna go through all this but this is like another aspect of african culture you can't forget about african masquer uh the african masquerading then some of the names of the African masquerades uh, is the Isan Ilima, Irini. The Igbo is the uh, M. Manwan. The Yoruba is the Igungun. The Egala are the Ibera of the Igwu, which all then literally means spirit. The Congolese, uh, uh, Ming, Mangji, and the, the Galili. Special Igun masquerades in Yoruba are considered people rising from the dead. Bone skeletons made alive, hence assumptions that are heavily beings. Yoruba dictionary, igungung, bones, skeletons, bones, sounds, the bones, the bone. So it is a form of ceremony that is honoring the ancestors, invoking the ancestors, getting answers from the ancestors, solving or resolving issues that may go on through the community that they may that may not be solo. So they have to invoke the ancestors and etc. And again, we talk about the ancestors transitioning to the agungun. The agungun word for Yoruba again means bones or skeleton bones. And literally, you hear people say we are walking on the shoulders of the ancestors. We are literally walking on the shoulders of our ancestors. Our ancestors, their bones are deposited beneath us within the ground. So we are literally standing on the shoulders of our ancestors. Um... Uh, I ain't gonna even go into this uh permitted through time uh and that was the two last list slides talking about clothing um may get a chance to come back but i'm i'm, I'm finishing up but again these are the, some of the things if you want to go back and look at some of the information that i have i present I, that i presented here just some it's again it's a summary of some of the presentation that we did people had a qu questions of what so we're trying to break it down to give you an uh, understanding of it these are my sources with here, which there are many other sources, but I couldn't go through and remember all of them and go through all uh, those presentation slides to try to go through each one of them to get. So I, I, a lot of them I remember, I just wrote them down, but I, that's why I put a lot of 
the platforms, Mossy and the Kofi, and you can go back and later on pause it, and then you can go back and you can look at these shows and get all the information you want because we go in detail on these things. Uh, and at that, man, I'm done. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Sean. Can you click it on my screen? It's on there. All right, I'm waiting on it to appear on YouTube. Let's go. Many thousands of years ago, in the Black Kingdoms far, far away, one of the most mysterious civilizations was created. And nowadays, we know about it as ancient Africa. Africa, the land of strong heart and courageous warriors, has always been known as the fortunate victim of wars and diseases. But just a few people know about the glorious time of the Black Kingdoms in the past. Take a trip with me to explore this black culture through this mysterious belief, art, and especially their legacies. In the first days of human society, people usually believed in supernatural forces, so did the ancient Africa. They created a specific religious system based on gods of daily life that interacted with nature. For instance, the most popular god of ancient Africa was Oya, the goddess of nature weaver, which they believe was the new home of the spirits. Also, Sen was the god of thunder that took an important role in providing water for heavens. Moreover, the god of chops were an interesting branch of ancient Africa belief system. The reason why that god of chops affected their life because they really believed in the connection between the life world and the dead world, which was represented by the spirit. The gods of chops are the gates between two worlds and was always balancing them. For example, Ogun was the important god of Ive, Oyo, and Edo people. He is the god of thunderers, warriors, blacksmith, and farmer. The religious system of ancient Africa wasn't only be important to the normal people. The mysterious powers affected directly to the leaders and the lords. They had to know how to use the magic powers, like healings, voodoo, and talking to the gods. So, after having the overview of ancient Africans belief, we realized that ancient Africa was so mysterious. Next, there is one aspect of ancient African civilization that has had a really deep and wide effect all over the world until today. It is the art. Ancient Africa was a diverse culture. That's why they expressed the most beautiful things on their art compositions. A lot of delicate sculptures are valuable both in art and history. Beside that, they discovered a lot of new materials for sculpture, like the Benin people had the most famous art of ancient Africa. Because of the products from carving and ivory sculpturing, the just mask that were used in the festival, the ascent were known for the fancy embroidery crest and gold product, or the Zulu people became the richest kingdom on time with the fancy jewelries. That's why Africa is also known as the Black Diamond. 
they not only had a worldwide impact in ancient times, the culture of Africa, especially art, has influenced contemporary artists. And the famous Picasso is one of them. Finally, after being introduced to the belief and art, we could take the general view of ancient Africa's culture. It's really colorful and interesting. But, have we still reserved the wonderful pride of ancestor? After going through the wars and colonialism, a lot of Africa was destroyed. Maori, the bride of ancient Africa, used to be the most powerful kingdom with the richest economy and biggest land, but they couldn't protect themselves when the Empire of Ghana came from the 17th to 19th century, then the Shanghai. And finally, is the worst one, colonialism from Europe. Half of their land was annihilated. The Africans are still full of pride whenever they tell a story by tale and songs to the foreign visitors. Moreover, lots of aspects from ancient Africa culture are still kept in daily life. Till now, we may find a god of blacksmith Ogun on the side street of Benin or the communicating with spirits is still happening in modern Zimbabwe. So, the traditional belief is to develop beside modern religion, Muslims. Some aspects of ancient art are to remember mostly in daily life. Men are still farming. Women make pottery or embroidery crafts. And finally, music and sculpture of Africa are still developing all around the world. Ancient Africa has stayed with us for over a thousand of years and will continue longer than that. Ancient Africa showed us the development through time of human society, not only in the black diamond, but all over the world. They took a lot of effort, blood, and even life to create the modern world today. They appreciate what they've done and promise to reserve their legacy. Hopefully, the glorious time of ancient world will come back to the modern world soon. African culture derives from a long-standing history of scientific evolution and genius. A story today that could be written once upon a time, the earliest modern humans, etc., etc., ultimately set out to establish themselves in a world that had many clues that requested the curiosity of the earliest woman and man. From those curiosities developed the earliest forms of what we know today as culture. What developed from this culture defined the circumstances for all mankind. My portion of the, uh, the what is African culture presentation will enlist in defining arts and crafts, clothing, cuisines, and of course, African culture from my perspective. What is African culture? It would be Taylor is reputed as the scholar who first coined and defined culture in his work, Primitive Culture in 1871 and reprinted in 1958. Taylor saw culture as the complex whole, which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, customs, or any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society. This definition captured the exhaustive nature of culture. One would have expected that this definition would be an unevocal one, but this is not so. In fact, there are so many definitions of culture as there are scholars who are interested in the phenomenon. 
Culture embraces a wide range of human phenomena, material achievements, and norms, beliefs, feelings, manners, morals, and so on. It is the pattern way of life shared by a particular group of people that claim to share a single origin or descent. In an attempt to capture the exhaustive nature of culture, Bello sees it as the totality of the way of life evolved by our people in their attempts to meet the challenge of living in their environment, which gives order and meaning to their social, political, economic, aesthetic, and religious norms, thus distinguishing the people from their neighbors. In Africa, rich and diverse cultures exist from country to country, while distinctive and peculiar cultures also survive within each state. The continent is home to a large number of ethnic and social groups, each of whom have their own set of tribal customs and traditions. The idea that the essential core of culture consists of traditional ideas historically derived and select still has merit. But in modern time, cultures are seen as a whole, integrated systems that reflect a way of life, a set of attitudes, values, beliefs, and behaviors shared by a particular group of people at a particular time and most importantly at the same time different in each individual for each individual there are universal cultural aspects of human behavior which are helpful in defining a particular group's culture you have language oral and written storytelling social practices kinship gender and marriages principles morals law customs beliefs and values expressive forms art music mythology ritual and religion capabilities learning communication functions habits, behavior, routines, and practices, technologies, cooking, shelter, and clothing. This shows that every human being who grows up in a particular society is likely to become infused with culture of that society, whether knowing or unknowingly, during the process of social interaction. We do not need to have all the definitions of culture and its defining characteristics for us to understand the concept and meaning of culture. Even though there are uh, as many definitions of culture as there are writers, there is an element of similarity that runs through them all. This singular underlying characteristic is the attempt to portray and capture culture as the entire or total way of life of a particular group of people. E. Tuck in 2002 is one of their opinion, an entire way of life would embody, among other things, what the people think of themselves and the universe in which they live, their worldview, in, in other words, how they organize their lives in order to ensure the survival. It can be safely stated that there can be no culture without society. It can also be said that culture is uniquely human and shared with other people in society. Culture is selective in what it absorbs and accepts from other people who do not belong to a particular culture group. There is no sound of this video. I just want you guys to just take a look at the video as it plays. arts and crafts. Immediately with the phrase African craft, one enters into a realm of what constitutes art and what is craft. Craft is essentially a production of an item that requires skill to produce it. This makes most art craft does it make craft art. A never ending discourse that will one suspects continue to be uh, heatedly debated for all time. A lot of the argument arises because the initial dialogue Westerners divided the African had no art as they knew it, which was primarily based upon painting and representational art. Instead, African painting consists of decorating surfaces like rock faces, hides, bark, pottery, mud, hut sculptures, and human bodies. Africa had function and utility and craft, along with textile fetishes, idols, and cultural artifacts. Within their own communities, they were valued, uh, they were valued for everything that their African craft represent, which was not just visual, their symbolization and spiritual dimensions alongside their decorative and aesthetic qualities. Master craftsmen and women had special status within societies and were respected members of their communities. Expertise and tra traditional skills were revered and uh, coveted. Unfortunately, artists' names are often not known were not recorded when the objects of their creativity were initially collected and preserved. 
Studying African craft allows us to look at issues of culture, identity, and history, as well as aesthetics, all topics that are relevant in contemporary craft as much as traditional craft. Elements of African aesthetic resemblance to a human being. African artists praise a car figure by saying that it looks like a human being. Artists seldom portray particular people, actual animals, or actual form of invisible spirits. Rather, they aim to portray ideas about reality, spiritual, or human, and express these ideas through human or animal images. Luminosity. The lustrous, smooth surface of African figural sculpture often embellishes with the decorative scarification indicates beautifully shiny, healthy skin. Figures with rough surfaces and uh, deformities are intended to appear ugly or morally flawed. Self-composure. The person who is composed behaves in a measure of rational way. He or she is controlled, proud, and dignified and cool. Youthfulness. A youthful appearance cognizes vigor, productive, uh, productiveness, fertility, and the ability to labor. Illness and deformity are rarely depicted because they are signs of evil. Clarity. A form of detailed complexity of compensation, balance, and symmetry, smooth of finish. African artists place a high value on fine worksmen and mastery of medium. While many uh, kinds of African art are employed in communal contexts, others serve the needs of individuals. Domestic furnishing and objects of personal use, while practical in purpose, also have aesthetic dimensions. The artistic enhancement of objects of utilitarian function reflect and reinforce an individual standing and status in society. Details of form and decoration personalize an object, making it as the property of specific individual and occasionally providing information among uh, information about ethnic affiliation, social status, or rank, excuse me. At the same time, the artistic inventiveness and careful execution of such works clearly indicate a desire to integrate aesthetics into the daily life. African governments are stepping up pressure on Western museums to return stolen artifacts following a French government report that urged mass restitution of objects in France national museums that were seized during the colonial era. Hundreds of thousands of artifacts believed to represent some 90% of Africans' cultural heritage now populate exhibitions in European museums and private collections. There's millions worldwide. Welcome to Tuna Check It, and thank you for watching. If you want us to cover one of your topics, please leave us suggestions in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos. African clothing is a traditional clothing worn by the people of Africa, and African fashion is booming and ever expanding. African clothing style is very vast and unique, and every region has its own special materials, styles, and design. And in this video, Tonachiki presents top 10 most stylish cultural African clothes. Number 10, Shoshwe, most popular in the Southern African region. This is a printed dyed cotton fabric widely used in traditional South African dressmaking. Number 9, Kante, popular in the West African region. This is a type of silk and cotton fabric made of interwoven cloth strips and native to the people of Akan in the south of Ghana. Number 8, Umbako, most popular in the Southern African region. These are skirts and dresses that are typically decorated with beads, mostly worn by the Hosa people of South Africa. Number 7, Aso Oke, most popular in the West African region. This is a handloom cloth woven by the Yoruba people of Western Nigeria and used to make the Agabada, Iro, and the Fila. Number 6, Dish Dasha or Kanzu. This is an ankle length garment, usually with long sleeves, similar to a robe or tunic. It is commonly worn in the North African regions or Muslim African countries. Number 5. 
the Grand Bokwao. This is very popular in Western African countries. It is a long, colorful, loose-fitting garment worn by both sexes in many parts of West Africa. Number 4. Tikoi and Letso from the Eastern African region. This is traditionally a piece of rectangular woven clothing originating from the East Coast parts of the Eastern African coast. Number 3. Kemis, most popular in the Horn of Africa. This is an ankle length dress that is usually worn by Ethiopian and Eritrean women at formal events. Number two, the Kitenge. This is an East African and Central African fabric similar to the Kikoi, but they are a thicker cloth and have an edging on only one side. They are often worn by women and wrapped around the chest or waist. Number one, and the title for the most stylish cultural African clothes goes to the Dashiki. This is a colorful garment for men worn as a shirt and women as an ankle length skirt or dress that is widely worn around Africa and styled in many different ways. Did you like our list? Please subscribe and leave your comments and opinions below. African clothing. African clothing commonly refers to the traditional clothing worn by the people of Africa. Different tribes throughout the uh, continent pride themselves on their national dress, which they use for ceremonies and special occasions. There are many varied styles of dress and the type of cloth plays an integral role in fashion the garment. The fabric often reflects the social in general as well as the status of individuals or groups within the community. In some instances, traditional robes have been uh, replaced or influenced by foreign cultures, like the colonial impact of Western popular dress code. The evolution of dress in Africa is very dif uh, difficult to trace due to the lack of written word or actual, uh, actual historical evidence. Much is pieced together from various sources like traditional robes being handed down to present they tribal methods or word of mouth or history theater masquerades and from art and artifacts which show sculptural represent representation of dress the precise origin of cloth production in africa in lost is lost in time but archaeological findings indicate some of the earliest sites drawings of looms can be seen in the tombs of ancient egypt dating back to at least 2000 bce archaeologists have found linen remnants in ancient egypt as well as fifth, uh, fifth century cloth uh cotton cloth remnants in moreau in northern sudan in west africa woven fi uh, fiber pieces dating back to the ninth century ce have been found in nigeria and woven clothes called uh cotton cloth dating to 11th century has been recovered in mali evidence of loom is used in Mauritania dates back to the 11th century Many African societies weave cloth uh, from local grown cotton. In North Africa and the Sahel, women also spin and weave camel and sheep wool. Other sources of fiber include the Rafari palm in Central and West Africa, Jupin flax in West Africa, and Madagascar, and in Silk in Nigeria, Madagascar, and East Africa. All of these fibers can be dyed using vegetable and mineral dyes. The two main kind of textile looms in Africa are the double he uh, heater loom used for narrow strips of cloth and a single heater loom used for wider pieces the narrow strips are typically sewn together then cut into pieces for clothing the double heater loom is generally used only by male weavers who use it to weave in color threads and create richly textured fabrics in addition weavers in north africa and in ethiopia also use uh, ground looms while looms similar to the those used in southeast asia are found in madagascar Although Africa weavers produce a wide variety of pattern, color, and fabric, they are also weave plain clothes. These uh, cloth, this cloth can either be used 
as is for daily wear around the home or it can be decorated common fabric decorating techniques include applique design sewn sewn on in contrast fabrics embroidered with brightly colored threads and dyeing Two of the most popular dyeing techniques in Africa are tie and dye and, res uh, and resist dye. In a tie and dye design, are first tied or twitched into cloth using cotton and raffia threads. In resist dye, dyes draw on the cloth using an impermeable substance such as a candle wax or paste made from Casanova or tuber. They then dip the fabrics into solutions typically made from vegetable dyes which color all but the covered areas. Indigo plants are used for deep blue eyes, while reddish brown dyes are extracted from cola nuts. The camwood tree and the redwood tree, green, yellow, and blacks are prepared from other sources. Most designs and motifs used to decorate the fabric have names. Many designs are associated with particular plants, animals, events, and proverbs, and are often used in other crafts such as house paintings, carvings, and pottery. Other incorporate Arabic script, Roman letters and numerals, or line drawings are contemporary objects such as bicycles and cars. Traditional cloth production, in other words, is not only highly valued from place to place, but also influenced by uh, societal and technological change. Welcome to Tuna Checking, and thank you for watching. If you want us to cover one of your topics, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos. The diversity of African cuisine can be compared to the diversity of cultures and ethnic groups inhabiting this continent. The diversity of this cuisine is quite evident in terms of ingredients and choices. And in this video, Tuna Chiki covers 10 best delicious African dishes. Number 10, Achu and Yellow Soup from Cameroon. This is a greatly cherished meal in Western Cameroon. Its method of cooking and the way of which it's eaten is very traditional. Achu is served and eaten on plantain leaves using the fingertips. Number 9, Zanzibari Biryanis and Pilau from Tanzania. These are considered as celebratory dishes in this country. They are basic rice dishes assorted with a wide variety of spices. Number eight, Momba Digalia from Angola. This meal is considered as one of the country's favorite food. It is also referred to as chicken momba. It is a spicy, oily stew prepared with palm oil, chilies, okra, and garlic. Number seven, Nyama Choma and Ugali from Kenya. This assorted roasted meat and ground maize meal is considered a delicacy in East Africa, especially Kenya. Number six, chicken tangine from Morocco. The Moroccan chicken tangine is a stew that takes its name from the heavy earthware pot in which it's not cooked in, traditionally over an open fire or in a bed of charcoal. Number five, carpenter with sanza from Zimbabwe. Carpenta comprises of serving two pieces of small freshwater fish that are crisp fried. It's much transit source of protein by the locals. It is often accompanied by a bowl of delicious porridge known as sansa. Number four, piri piri chicken from Mozambique. Mozambique is known to have some of the best and popular dishes in Africa. This is because its cuisine are known to blend oriental and Arab flavors as well as African and Portuguese flavors. Number three, shisha nyama from South Africa. This meal comprises of barbecue meat and maize porridge with a combination of starch and stewed meat and braised with a side of serving of relish or spicy gravy. This is one of South Africa's favorite meals.
Number two, injera and curry from Ethiopia and Eritrea. Injera is made out of turf flour, a gluten-free flour produced from turf, a popular African grain. Injera has a distinctive soft flavor and a spongy texture, which makes it ideally suited for eating it with curry, stew, and other wet dishes. Number one, and the title for the most delicious dish in Africa goes to jollof rice and egusi soup from Nigeria, Senegal, and Ghana. This is one dish you should not leave when visiting West Africa. It comprises of rice, onions, peppers, tomatoes. It is served along with egusi soup, which is made of ground melon seeds and bitter leaves, which is a quite delicacy in the region. Did you like our list? Please subscribe and leave your comments and opinions below. African cuisines. Traditionally, most of Africa cuisines use a combination of locally cereal grains, available fruits and vegetables, as well as meat and milk products. In some parts of the, uh, the Africa, the traditional diet features a preponderance of curd, fresh and healthy vegetables while their product milks. In much of tropical Africa areas, milk of a cow cannot be produced locally because it's rare. Depending on the region of this continent, there are also sometimes quite significant and a lot of differences in the drinking and the eating habits throughout the Af uh, Africa's many populations. The Horn of Africa, North Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, West Africa, and Southern Africa each have their own preparation techniques, distinctive dishes, and consumption consumption mores. African cuisines is a diverse as the many cultures that exist on the continent. And its cuisines is not only reflective of this rich diversity, but also full of flavor. Besides the great tasting stews, soups, and snacks that are a part of African cuisines, there are a number of interesting and easy to prepare staple starch dishes that accompany dishes. Below is a list of popular dishes that's known as the cuisine. Now, I didn't list them here because I wanted to get, I can get that to you in the article. As for as umbrella term goes, African is a large one. The continent com uh, comprises a multitude of countries, cultures, and regions. The food is as diverse as the continent itself. African culture, as defined earlier, has given its descendants throughout the diaspora the ability to forever set trends. Rather, it is cooking, clothing, arts, and crafts, we have forever possessed the ability to move the needle further than any other ethnicity on this planet. Futuristic technology couldn't give way to the ashe of the African. The world has spoken and the bar has forever been set. African culture is the unique ability to always recreate itself by all of its descendants. The world follows our lead, and that will never change. Here are my sources. Please pause the video. Screenshot if anyone is interested in the popular dishes. The website is above with the journal, or you can go and uh, you can get that. And this is up to date. You can pause the video again for the sources. History is a clock that people use to tell their political and cultural time of day. It is also a compass that people use to find themselves on the map of human geography. History tells the people where they have been, what they have been, where they are, and what they are. Revolutionary 
All right, so I do want to say this real quick, man, before uh, anybody else go. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning into the show. Those who roll with us for the full two hours and those who hop back on and off, I do realize and understand that uh, right now um, there is a debate going on between an idiot and somebody who, who actually has a little bit of sense when they have the ability to have some sense. So I can kind of understand, you know, why people will hop off to go and deal with the foolishness. However, I appreciate those of you that actually stood in and hung in this entire time. And with all due respect, I appreciate it. Um, if you uh, appreciated this particular show, it is kid-friendly content. Uh, we would prefer you to share the videos with your kids so that they actually can, some, can learn some things about their culture, their immediate culture, and uh, their immediate lineage, and their immediate ancestors, and, their, and the ways of life that had happened way before we were colonized and acculturated uh, of a people. Um, we had all of these things that we brought to the new world um, and that we still are able to show remnants of. So remember who your identity and your allegiance is to. You will always be connected to a place you have been removed from. So on that note, I don't have nothing else to say, but thank everybody for tuning in. Over you mute. Now nah, I was gonna ask the child, did he have anything before we close out? You had you had any words? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say a couple things. Um, you know, all of us do our part to you know, share information and gather information and teach uh those of us who choose to be intelligent and go about it in an intelligent fashion. Um, I was tuning in to Brother Garfield's show earlier, and I made a couple comments, um, not to get into responses, but I wanted to make a couple points clear. Um, anybody arguing about even the usage of the word African or Africa and anything of that nature, and they argue that we shouldn't be using it because of the background of it coming from a European source or it's a European word or term. And, you know, I commented and, and, and said that, you know, we shouldn't be on here on the hangout there. Saying Kofi, saying Sean and myself and everybody tuned in, we should not be on this hangout if we want to base things based off of the origins of the term or the technology coming from someone other than quote unquote black people. Um, I think it's just real dumb at this point in the game. We have so much work to do um, as a people in propelling ourselves forward to catch up um, in terms of especially in this country being coming off four or five hundred years of not even being literate. So the literacy rate when I go into these schools teaching every day is crazy. You know, kids can't even spell their last name, but they're making fun of each other and, and, call, and you know, want to debate about whether or not if we black or African or anything like that, you know, it's, it's foolish, you know, can't read and write, but we want to talk about each other. And even, you know, right now to today with the debates of the different videos of just all of the foolishness as Sin Sean stated. And it's, it's crazy when you can come and get some real good sound and information. Um, one more point I wanted to make um, about, I've heard mem many members of the Amara squad and the affiliate families, um, including Sin Sean, talk about, you know, this quote unquote boring thing when it comes to information in certain channels. Um, and Brother Kofi, you spoke on this as well. You know, we have to stop entering that conversation as if boring, you know, under the precepts that boring is what other people say it is. You know, anything that sounds like intelligent and, 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 and meticulous and, 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 you know, tedious, that is going to be boring to the average person because they have no discipline. And we all understand that, you know, Brother Kofi and, and, and Brother Sean, they took time to put these presentations together. You know, be having 100, 150 slides or better. You know, I know they got information for days because I know I do. And, you know, it... it for me, it's not boring at all to sit on a hangout for two hours and watch my brothers get it in. Like I said, I came here to learn something. 
And so although I may deal with certain African languages, cultures and music and everything like that, in my respect, I am only one individual. And we know that in Africa, teams win. We know that in nature, teams win. And we know that most organisms that we find in nature do not thrive on their own. Like there's not one hippopotamus in the world. There's not one rhino. There's not one octopus. There's not one cheetah, et cetera. We are a group of organisms and we are social creatures. And we all need to work together if we're going to survive this thing we call life because we're being attacked on all fronts. And we have to understand that boring and, and, and what's fun to the student, this is fun right here. A couple of hours of information. I sit here all day with, 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 with my girl and family. They'll tell you, they go crazy. Like, man, this boy will read and videos all doggone day. That's right. <laughs> you know, because that's what it's going to take if we are to really do something um, about our predicament and, and, and state of affairs globally. Um, so not to be long winded, I just want to say again, I'm honored and, and, and uh, privileged to be on the panel. Um, I've been away from the brothers for a while, but I've been in doing, doing my, my share of the work. I mean, I'm teaching and, and talking and networking and building my foundation weekly. So, um, you know, I will be if uh, I know Brother Kofi probably going to say you need to pull out a presentation, brother. But uh, I most definitely will put something together because it's been a while. Um, and again, I like to share, <clears throat> like the show, excuse me, share the show and be sure to check out those sources that these brothers presented. These brothers are always sourced up. It's not personality worship. It's a fact. Every video I've seen is sources and then no sources lead you to more sources and they all back up the information that's presented today. So um make sure you do that and uh with that I don't have anything else. All right. Well we finna get ready to get up out of here man. Uh, again we appreciate everybody for tuning in uh and listening to what me and brother Sean had to say today or what, you know, or just tuning in every week, man, and listening to what we all, you know, saying the information that, that we um that we're sharing. Um again, y'all could have been doing anything else with y'all time, but again, y'all choose to rock out with the monster. So again, man, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Uh continue to support uh support us, continue to support the the various platforms, Kofi Pisa TV, I'm in Raw Squad, Seshu Ma'ani. Uh, Meta Netter, uh, MBK, Dagger Squad. Um, appreciate y'all again, man. Um, we'll see y'all next time. Uh, at the same time, Lafia. <laughs> <laughs>